Now, getting to the TFM 10% system, I figured if we talked about how I developed this system, maybe it'll give you kind of like a little insight into how I think, just like we talked about the Buy a B a few minutes ago. So my designer's intent with the TFM 10% system is to, one, of course, show that a simple system could work, and that's that's basically all my research. When I did the 220 EMA breakout system back in 95, I think it was actually published in 96, I wrote it in 95, I was looking to prove that a simple system could work in the Japanese yen. So in this case, my designer's intent was to avoid the diaper change moments. Ian McActavy, great speaker, all around great guy, awesome dude, as I often say. He was my canary in a coal mine, you know. He smoked a lot. He uh, he didn't drink a lot, but he drank, you know. And I'm like, okay, when he goes, maybe I need to <laughs> tap the brakes on my lifestyle a little bit. And unfortunately, uh, he left this earth way too soon, but he was awesome. Anyway, if a market's going to lose 50% of its value, it's going to lose 10% first, okay? So my thinking was, once the market begins to drop from the 50-week closing highs, and once it drops 10% or more from that level, I need to think about getting out of that market. Now, that's not an individual stock. An individual stock obviously could do that in one day. But the overall market in general, especially for the S&P 500, although I did take a Q signal, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, but overall, 10% is a pretty good round number for like the S&P 500. If the S&P 500 drops 10%, it's probably in trouble. And here's the amazing thing. No guarantees, right? It's a free system anyway, so I'll refund your money. <laughs> but uh, if you look at every sell-off in history, there was a 10% drop, and then the market really imploded. It's not like the market drops 50% overnight. It kind of gradually rolls over. And I've done presentations before where I show – where you have these somewhat gradual, it always feels like the market just tanks and, and crashes, right? But if you actually go back and look at it, it might have gone sideways for four months or sometimes even longer before rolling over. Now, sometimes it happens a little bit more quickly, but usually it'll drop that 10% and it's kind of like the, the clock is ticking if it's going to get worse, unless it goes right back up, obviously. But anyway, now I did throw in a 50-week moving average to help reduce the whipsaw and then i actually recently or not that long ago i should say went back in and and tried to take out the moving average and just see how it worked with just a 10 percent indicator and it didn't work as well so if you do add more and more indicators especially like your whipsaw filters make sure you back those try to back them out and see if you can live without them but i ended up with two indicators so to speak and they're both based on the action of price itself. So you're not waiting for a moving average to turn up or turn down or cross over on things of that nature. Anyway, so I use the 50 week moving average to help reduce the whipsaw. Now for a sell signal, because they slide faster than they glide, and you pilots out there, don't, don't give me shit about that. I know that a glide actually goes down, but you know, glide higher as opposed to diving lower, right? take the escalator up and the elevator down, all the other adages. But stuff comes unglued quickly, right? So for sales, it just has to close below the 10% line, which is which is 10% or I should say 90% of the 50-week closing highs, the way it's programmed in the ACP platform. So after a 10% drop from the 50-week closing high, it's based on the close, not the high high, but the closing high, then if it's also below the 50 week moving average, this is a weekly chart we're using it on, okay? Then you need to exit the market. Now, of course, I'm looking at bow ties and I'm looking at Landry Light and I'm looking at other moving averages and all these other good things when I'm doing this. And of course, the blank chart and measuring the net net move too. But this is one pretty serious signal that I do tend to heed. Now, Excuse me, it doesn't mean that I exit every stock I'm long, okay? I just get a little bit more picky on new positions, okay? Because every now and then you have a stock that just keeps on going. We had one that went up another couple hundred percent, even though the market rolled over about a year ago or whatever. So you don't, and I've given complete present, every time the market rolls over, I give a complete presentation on this. And knock on wood, I've been lucky several times 
and that one out of however many stocks were long continues to go up and really makes a big difference even though the market rolls over doesn't happen all the time which it did but anyway now for sales it's just got to close again below that buy line 10 percent away from the 50-week closing high and below the 50-week moving average now for the buys to avoid whipsaw and this is really the really the big whipsaw filter here the 50-day the simple moving average is more of a whipsaw filter for getting you back in too early and it has to have two bars of Landry light above the 50. So that means that the trend is beginning to accelerate. When you get the, the Landry light above the moving average, that means the market is starting to pull away from its average. It means that it's starting to outperform compared to how it was performing. So that could be the beginnings of the acceleration. That's part of the 230 EMA or 220 EMA system that I alluded to a minute ago. So two bars of Landry light, and then it has to be within 10% of the 50-week closing eye. That's the entire system right there. So here was a sell signal in the queues. You could see the high for the, I know the high in the SP, I think was on the 31st. Looks like the NASDAQ topped out a little bit earlier than that, okay? But notice that it didn't top out and then drop, what is this, 30 something percent, 35%, okay? It didn't. It didn't top out and then immediately drop 35%. It kind of meandered back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then it eventually dropped 10%. Well, once it drops 10%, you need to put on your Scooby hat, uh, your rut row hat. What's the dog's name? <laughs> Rover. And think about getting out of the way. Now, recently, we had a buy signal. And I actually took this buy signal and I went in. And I did some quick hand testing, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about hand testing in a few minutes. But Astro, okay, yeah, <laughs> ruh -roh. Uh What's the? Uh, yeah, Astro went ruh -roh. What did? Uh, didn't Scooby's Scooby's dog do that? Anyway, so it went a buy signal here, and I went in and did some hand testing. And when you hand test, and that's one thing I want to get into tonight, but I don't know if we have enough time, but. One thing you want to do just real quick is go in and bar by bar, look at every single bar and see how your system, so to speak, would perform. Now, you don't want to do everything mechanical on a mechanical basis, but there are some times where a mechanical system might kind of get you into a market or help to alert you to, to something that's happening. So, for instance, just for SGs, I said, well, I guess well, I guess I'll take this signal here. And the queues have to look at it. It looks pretty robust. I think it's worth a shot. And so I got in at 319.49. So 319.50 round numbers. And knock on wood, okay, let's not start kissing each other just yet, but it's worked out fairly well. Now, was I bearish? What was that? Uh, or bullish? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's about eight weeks ago. And I put up a post on my website for the peas when that happened there too. But was I bullish eight weeks ago? Eh, not really, you know, and I don't know if I'm that bullish now. It stands today's action, right? A little bit more bullish at the end of the day than the beginning of the day. But here's a system telling you, hey, this is a buy signal. You might want to check it out. So for SGs, I bought 100 shares and it's working out. Knock a wood, not bragging yet. Now, don't reinvent the wheel. And that's a thing I really need to drive the point home. And it's like it's like everybody has to go on their own little grail hunt. And I've seen it happen so many times. It's like somebody new to come new to come to me. And I'll start working with them. And they'll start getting in and it'll start clicking. And then all of a sudden, they're doing all these other things and chasing all these other rabbits. And do something that that's already been done and as i'm going to kind of allude to in a minute here a lot of things all look the same anyway and and i'm not the grand poobah i think i've got some really good stuff but there's a lot of other people's stuff that probably looks and acts a lot like my stuff okay so i would encourage you not to go in and reinvent the wheel i've spent almost i want to say 30 but it's probably 25 years i've been married 25 years and i was trading before i met my wife so yeah it's probably 30 years just working on the pullback, you know? So learn how to trade pullbacks from, learn from a lot of the stuff that I've done. And then if you want to put your own little spin on it or tweaks on it, that's fine. But don't go out and reinvent the wheel. Cause it's like you're, 
it's like you're learning, you're learning, you're learning, and the learning curve is like starts doing this, and all of a sudden you start over and like, oh, I'm gonna start doing this and doing that, and before you know it, you're going straight up. And I guess I do some of that too, but as a general statement, I stick to my core methodology. So 35, 30, uh, 25, probably 35, probably 30 years. Whew, one cup of coffee next time, Dave. So use, you know, use me as a base. Uh, I've stood on the shoulders of, I'm not a giant. I mean, I'm a pretty big dude, <laughs> but I'm not a giant. But uh, I've stood on a lot of giant shoulders to get here. So take my work and stand on my shoulders. 